Hello and welcome back to Sutton What I've got before you today are two Squires CP40 combination locks. Two different locks, uh, but they both got the same model number. So this is the old model, uh, which is distinguished by the fact that it's got these holes on the uh, wheels. And the new one is distinguished by the fact that it's got uh, this screw at the top of the padlock. So I'm going to talk to you today about the old style padlock. And why am I talking to you about the old style padlock? It's because I see many of these uh, still available on eBay and Amazon and other websites. So I'm going to discuss how to set the code, what to do if you've forgotten the code, and I'm going to show you the internal workings. So let's start by setting the code. When you buy these locks, you usually get a tool to adjust these. So at the moment, as you can see, the code is set to 000. To change a code, you need, to, you need to open the padlock, push the bottom button, insert the tool and adjust the wheel to where you want it. Uh, whilst uh, you get given a tool to do this, I have found that if you use a one millimeter drill bit, you can get exactly the same results. So there you go, I've set the code to all the ones. I'm going to release the button, push the shackle in, and to prove it works, I'm going to open it, just to reset everything back to zero, push the button up, insert the tool and wind it back to zero. What you will find is a bit, um, is a bit of resistance and then uh, once the resistance gives way, you know you set the wheel. So just set there. You can, as I say, you can feel a little bit of resistance and then resistant tails off and sometimes you get a little kick. So hopefully I've reset that back to zero. And that is how to set the code. So what can we do if we've forgotten the code? Well, these uh, locks, unfortunately, are very easy to, to uh, decode and enhance their vulnerability. And I certainly wouldn't recommend that you use these to secure anything of any value. Uh, normally, I would uh, put a, a cover over this lock, change the wheels um, to a lock, to a combination that I didn't know, and then uh, show you how to open it. But obviously, it's really difficult to stick uh, this tool in and uh, uh, set the code up when you've got uh, a cover over the top. So uh, I've gone to my friend at uh, Savanton Lock Picking Club and he set the code on this one. Uh, and I don't know the code of this and I'm going to see if I can uh, decode it uh, on camera. So you can see we've got uh, a code of zero uh, zero zero at the moment and this thing doesn't unlock. So what we need to do is uh, push the button in at the bottom, uh, insert the uh, tool and turn the wheel until the, co until the wheel goes very, very slack. So, so that's quite stiff. So this wheel at the moment feels relatively stiff. And I'll just move it backwards and forwards and as you can see that's quite stiff. And that has gone fairly loose. So we'll move on to the next wheel. 
again keeping pressure on this button try to turn this wheel so it's quite that's gone fairly loose there so let's see if that's the code this wheel is not as stiff as I would like so maybe we've set one of the first two wrong That's gone fairly loose there. And this wheel is stiff, which is always a good sign. That's gone loose and it's just gone open. So that's how easy these things are to, to decode. So my colleague set a code of 4069. So there you go, that's how easy they are to uh, decode. And one of the reasons I don't recommend them for anything, uh, or to secure anything of any high value. So uh, let's move on to part three of this and on to the uh, disassembly. So here's our original padlock, uh, code set to 000, and uh, I was interested to see uh, what is inside this. So I've taken the shell off of one of them. Uh, this is uh, just a, an outer uh, shell. Uh, I don't know what it's made of, but it's uh, very clever. It's quite thick. And uh, when you take it off, uh, you get this. And as you can see, the size difference between these two, once you've taken the external shell off, is uh, quite remarkable. So there are two screws in the top of here that need to be undone. And then we can pop that open. And once you've undone a screw that sits in the bottom of here and taken a pin out that sits in the bottom of here uh, with a bit of manoeuvring, the shackle will come out and hopefully without spilling the contents of this everywhere, we can then take this apart. So I'm going to put this on the table there and hopefully zoom in a bit more to show you what we've got. So we've got a spring there which uh, the shackle which the shackle operates on and Stick that in there. So it sits like that. And when we've got the right code set, we can push this pin Let's see if we can get the right code. We can push this pin up like that. And when we've pushed it up like that, Trying to get the rules lined up again. That goes up. And these two plates slide inwards, which allows the shackle to go up. If I release this, those two plates should slide out. There you go. And that's what restricts the shackle. On the left hand side, these are spring tension pins just to give each wheel a cardinal point. So how does the internal work? Well, I'm unable to strip this down any further than that, 
but what I think is happening I'll show you on the next illustration. So what's happening inside? So, and unfortunately I'm unable to um, strip this down any further than that actually is needless to say that once you push the pin up these two plates travel inwards and release the shackle and when you release the pin these two pins travel outwards and trap the shackle. Um, I've come up with a high-tech solution to see if I can describe how or what's happening inside. So this tube represents the plunger this outer tube represents the code wheel and this inner wheel represents a clutch which you can't see. So on most padlocks what happens is you push the clutch up to disengage the code wheel then you can set the code and re-engage the uh, clutch or you push the clutch downwards and then set the code and then push the clutch back up. Now a typical example of this would be this type of padlock uh, where when you open it and push down to set a code uh, the clutch is driven downwards and disengages these codes wheels. And the same is true for this type of lock. That when you want to change the code, you insert a key into here and that pushes the clutch that way and disengages these wheels allowing you to change the code and uh, release it and the code will be changed. So that's how most padlocks work but Squires decided to do it slightly differently and as you turn the wheel obviously there's going to be a slot in the wheel that allows the plunger to go up but to change the code on this, when you push the plunger up, what it does is it seizes the inner clutch so it can't move. And it's only friction that allows you to turn this and set a new code. That's why they're giving you a special tool to overcome the friction. And once you pull the plunger back, the clutch is released and you can turn both the code wheel and the clutch at the same time. So that's how that operates. I hope that gives you some idea of what's going on inside this padlock. I hope it gives you some idea of the vulnerabilities, how to set the code and how to uh, find the code if you've forgotten it. Uh, thank you for watching. If you like anything about this, uh, please don't forget to like, subscribe or hit the notification bell. Um, if you've got any comments or feedback, I'd love to hear from you. That's all I've got time for you. Thank you for watching.